So, you know, in this uh, effort to discredit climate science in the lead up to the uh, 2009 Copenhagen summit, um, um, where, you know, various emails, including emails that were mine or were written to me, were stolen and then combed through to try to find words and phrases that if you took them out of context could be used to try to make it sound like climate scientists were engaged in something inappropriate, were hiding something. It was discovered that they had some emails that were sent out saying and proving conclusively that they were cooking in the science, that these scientists were lying, that they, that they were, and, and so one of the things that was, uh, was discovered that we came out was an email from one of these scientists to another, and, it, and that was 1999, and it read, and I'm quoting now, I've just completed Mike's nature trick, adding in the real temperatures of each of the story, uh, series for the last 20 years. In other words, he was, they were cooking the, the science at, the, at that time. They combed through thousands of emails looking for even just one little short phrase that they could use to try to attack climate scientists. And one phrase that they seized upon was an email uh, to me and some other scientists from my colleague Phil Jones of the University of East Anglia, where he referred to a trick that he used in this graph that he was preparing. And as all scientists and mathematicians know, a trick is a term that's used to describe a clever solution to a problem. Is here's the trick to solving that problem. Or, you know, this is a trick of the trade. We even use it that way in some of our sort of uh, popular uh, lingo as well. And what he was referring to was just a clever way to compare these paleoclimate temperature reconstructions that go back, you know, a thousand years with the modern warming shown in the instrumental record because the paleoclimate data actually don't come up to the present. Uh, because many of them, many of these corals and tree rings were obtained back in, you know, the 1970s or the 1980s. And so they don't come up to the present. So if you want a complete depiction of what's happening, um, you wouldn't stop at 1980. You would also show what we know happened since 1980 because we do have thermometer records uh, since 1980. Adding in the real temperatures of each of the story, uh, series. And so that's what he was doing, finding a way to show both pieces of information together so that you got the whole picture. Um, this was for the cover of a government report. It was for non-experts. So he wanted to simplify this as much as possible so that to an uninformed you know, you know, uh, reader, it would convey in a simple way what we know about long-term temperature changes. The most you know, distinguished scientific journal um, in the world, uh, the journal Nature, um, with a very austere, very conservative editorial board, weighed in quite you know, uh, definitively and passionately about how climate change deniers were intentionally misrepresenting scientists by implying that the use of the word trick was in any way nefarious. Um, it was very clear by the context that what they were talking about was something that was completely appropriate. Um, but that's sort of what you have when you're left without a legitimate argument for your case, which is where we ha what we have in the case of climate change denial today. All you've got to turn to, apparently, is innuendo and obfuscation and misdirection. And this was just another example of that. The, the full quote talks about Mike's trick and it also hides the decline. Could you explain, <clears throat> oh, not just briefly, what the hide of the decline is referring to and what did that have to do with anything? Yeah. With anything <clears throat> with your work? So what, uh, what the critics also tried to do is to take two different phrases from the same email that appear at opposite ends of a very long sentence and splice them together so you actually heard people there were people out there claiming that the email talked about uh, using a trick to hide the decline, using Mike's trick to hide the decline. The email doesn't say anything of the sort. The hide the decline is referring to something else later in the sentence. What uh, Phil Jones was talking about was that one particular climate reconstruction that was shown in his comparison uh, that had been performed by uh, Keith Briffa um, and colleagues uh, at the University of East Anglia. Um, they had used uh, density, the density of the rings of trees. So you can use tree ring uh, growth thicknesses to tell you something about climate, but it turns out that if you look at the density of the wood that grows in any particular year, that also tells you something about temperature. And so they had performed 
a reconstruction of temperatures uh, using exclusively these tree ring density measurements. And for various reasons that have been explored for you know, now uh, nearly two decades, um, these particular measurements track temperatures very well um, until about 1960, and then they begin to diverge. Um, the thermometer measurements tell us very clearly that the globe warmed substantially since then, but the tree ring data stop, the tree ring densities that they used, stop sort of reflecting that uh, warming. And uh, at the time, in fact, before that um, email ever was written, they had published a year earlier a paper in the journal Nature talking about this problem. It was hardly something that was hidden or nefarious. Uh, they were well aware of this problem and they stated very clearly in that paper in 1998 that because of this problem, you should not use the post-1960 data to depict temperature changes. Um, and so what Phil Jones was talking about in that email was he was hiding, all he meant was not misleading the readers of this report by showing them this very misleading um, post-1960 tree ring density data because they wrongly convey what was actually happening with temperatures. And we have thermometer measurements that tell us what actually happened with temperatures. So he was literally saying, for this simple graphic that's supposed to convey to this lay audience what we know about temperatures over the past thousand years, let's not show this bad data that will confuse them and mislead them. Uh, but somehow that was parlayed once again into something nefarious, something inappropriate by you know, some very cynical bad faith actors who were you know, using this misdirection and confusion really as a distraction to make sure that there were no meaningful negotiations and dealing with climate change at the upcoming uh, Copenhagen summit in 2009.